Welcome to the Red River at Shreveport, Louisiana, site of the Sitco Bassmasters Bass Federation Championships. I'm Tommy Sanders, and Jerry McKinnis will be along in a minute to try and tell us why this man right here, Ken Christ, blew away the competition on day one, and why for a select group of anglers from literally around the world, this is the biggest competition of their life. This is a three-day event that begins each morning at Stoner Park right here in Shreveport. And the five best weights after the first day of competition look like this, which was in a way a surprise because spring floods in northern Louisiana and Arkansas have made the actual river itself unfishable. The search for clean water and oxbows off the river has been an ongoing thing for every angler this week. Well, Ken Christ has found the answer on day one in a piece of water fairly close to headquarters. Ken hails from Butler, Missouri, and his experience fishing southern waters has been advantageous to him, although in actuality he spent very few days on the Red River system. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is presented by Long John Silvers. They definitely stick around today. Today, we are going to crown the World Amateur Bass Fishing Champion, the Bass Federation Season Ending Championship today on the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. I'm Tommy Sanders, along with Jerry McKinnis today, Jimmy Dykes. Got a lot of stuff on the line. We got all that to talk about, but we got a good tournament going on as well. Yeah, right now, you look at the leaderboard and three uh, very good anglers sitting at the top. Ken Chris is in first place, Chris Price in second, and a familiar name, Gary Eusta, all the way from Zimbabwe. He's fished the Classic before, he's used to fishing under pressure, and if you come through the Federation Trail, as you guys know, you have earned your stripes once you get to that yeah, Classic. That is, that is absolutely true. The way these guys get here to this tournament, well, it's a, a many-faceted process. They begin in their local chapters, try to make it onto their state team. As the state team champions, they will go to the regional championships, and they'll have a championship team there as well, but they will also crown the top competitor from each state. And from each state, those top competitors are the ones who converge here at the year-ending season championship here in Shreveport. We've also had the division championships going on, and the winner from each division, or the highest finisher in this tournament from each division, is going to get something really special, and that is a trip to the Bassmasters Classic. What could be better for an average, everyday fisherman, Jerry? Well, I should say, we've got some special rules here, too. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. right. We've got rules here. First of all, these guys can only practice one day, and after registration, they can get no more info and purchase no more tackle. Wow. And tackle-wise, they can only have seven rods and two tackle boxes. That's all they can take from their home to the site. Okay. Then tackle boxes have to close, too. You can't jam them up like I know you would do. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, they can have no nets. So, yeah, there's some special right. rules I can here. jump up and down on them and make them get closed. <laughs> but that really is some neat special rules that make the, the playing field just a little more level. We talked about the division champion from this tournament going on to the Bassmasters Classic. Let's take a look at that leaderboard. In the northern region, it's Hardy Togetska on top. In the southern division, Jesus Villegas. In the central region, it's Kim Christ currently on top. First place in the western region is Ron Colby. And now with his fifth fish of the day, the leader in the eastern region, Chris Price. Oh, do you don't. Have you ever? <laughs> Did you see that? Be nice, girl. Be nice. Yeah, there's number one. Well, that's what we're looking for. You stay in the boat. How about that one? Yeah, how about that one? 17 pounds on the first day of the tournament. Starts out day two with a big bang. And you know what, Tommy? We're going to have to really explore this little uh, honey hole well, <laughs> that he's that, yeah. fishing because, boy, he's sure taking a lot of fish out of that out of that particular place. And all these guys, I think, we're going to find our, our kitchen and flipping plastics of some kind. How about... How about Rob Colby? Uh, had a great day uh, uh, yesterday, his first day, and and he is in fifth place in the event and doing very well in his division. Big fish! Oh shoot! Oh yeah! Come on! Come on! Get up here! Yamma jamma! <laughs> Tough fishing in here so close. 
This is Chris Price. Chris is from Maryland. He's second overall right now in the tournament, but first in the Eastern Division. That's mighty important. And if Tommy, we saw him come in yesterday in a way, and he had such a great string of fish, and then along come Chris, who betters him. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them are in striking distance of each other. be called out that day. I think these fish are just starting to pick up feed and they've been spawning while we were gone. We were here three weeks ago for, for practice and if I, the, fish, uh, the river was, was clean for about half the time we were here and I think the fish were spawning right then and the water went and got muddy and it's been about muddy ever since but they went on and spawned somewhere in this mud and now they're just coming back up out of deep water, I think, and, and feeding a little bit. My, my buddy fishing next to me there, he, he agrees with that. There's a good one. There's a good one. There's a good one. You stay down there, girl. You stay down there. Let me get you into the boat, sweetheart. You let me get you into the boat. You stay hooked. Well, that buddy that Chris is talking about is this man right here, Ken Chris. When you said they're within striking distance, of each I meant other, that. You were literal. <laughs> they, they could they could reach out and touch each other That's literally. Right. I didn't mean Open in the mouth. contest. I mean they could actually <laughs> strike <laughs> each other. I mean, that's going to be fun watching that's how that develops one. during the day because they're definitely on some on some fishing. You know, of course, there's some other guys fishing some other waters. Uh, our buddy Chunky. Yeah, Chunky Villegas. We had to have him in the in the show just because of his name. Didn't oh we? yeah, yeah. This is for my mother. <laughs> Oye, mami, pa que me entiende, lo ve? Siempre te digo que estoy pescando. Ahora me vas a poder ver en televisión. Pa que me entiende. Te quiero. All right. <laughs> I was just telling my mother. I'm always, you know, telling her I'm fishing, and now that she's get, now she's gonna see me on TV, and I told her I love her because she thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> All right, once again, Ken and Chris right here, they are within casting distance of each other, and I'm not even talking about a long cast. When one of them catches a fish, the other one yeah, is watching it. There are spectators, cameras everywhere all around. It is a spectacle. <laughs> There's the one we need right there. Oh, he's pulling. has got to be a distraction. And, gotta be. Oh, and we've seen it be distractions in, in other events, That's Tommy. But you know what? Both of them are catching so darn many fish. <laughs> yeah, there, there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. Yeah, they're, they're, they don't care what the other guy is doing. Uh, uh, but about the time Chris is catching a fish, Ken is getting a strike, so you better pay attention to your own business. <laughs> Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco and in part by Mercury and by Triton. Well, we're, we're not quite to the uh, do the winner's circle yet, but the, I, I don't know that I could explain it. It just can be completely awesome to, to win because you're here fishing against the, the best amateur anglers in the world. Uh, so even to make it here is a thrill. Uh, and to proceed on and have the opportunity to perhaps uh, fish in the Bassmasters Classic would just be uh, a dream come true for me. Well, obviously, Ken Christ has a perfect grasp of the situation, and all of the guys in contention have their own game plan as well. Um, Going to fish the same spots. Um, try a diff few different other baits that we didn't. I didn't try yesterday. I should have. 
Um, after watching them fish blowing up around us and stuff, chasing them shad around, I think I should have been trying other, other things because they, they didn't seem to be quite as tight to the bank yesterday with all that cloud cover as they were the day before. I feel sure the guys that, that caught the 18-pound two days, he'll catch them again today because they just they like it down here. You know, the top two stringers fishing at 50 yards each other. You definitely see that, but we are underway with day number three of our competition. Normally, a lot of stumps and logs to look out for. I think it's too high right now to worry about standing timber. Just rock dikes. Yep. Right now, right. Let's take a look at the Red River up north of here. It forms actually for a while the border between Texas and Oklahoma. Flows past Shreveport, Louisiana, through the state of Louisiana, basically northwest to southeast. Joins the Mississippi River down around Baton Rouge. And you know, Tommy, you don't really think about the folks in Shreveport being the, the hub of bass fishing, but get to thinking about it, uh, they're they're close to a lot of good fishing. And right in their backyard on the Red River, that is the Red River right now. It, it's living up to its name, Boy. full of mud and trucking along. So these guys are hunting for clean water. And what's in here is there's some timber in the back. There's a little creek going down through here. Some hydrilla in here. The fish are moving up on these flats. Oh, shoot. Picking up, uh, they're picking up shad. That is Earhart Hardy Tulgeska from Alpena, Michigan. So far, Hardy has been the number one performer at the championship here from the northern region. So he's definitely on the classic track, as is this guy right here, Ron Colby, number one performer from the western region so far. And most of these guys are pitching plastics of some kind in around the brush now. Hardy was was uh, throwing a buzz bait and a uh, uh, scum frog and things like that. Most of these guys are pitching oh, and flipping. Get, get up here. Get up here. No flow. Yes! <laughs> One! She hasn't spawned. Look at that. Oh, maybe she has. Just full of food. Farms probably about seven, eight hundred acres. He's been in business for over forty years, and we. There he is! There he is! Oh yeah! Come on, Papa! There, son. It's always good to get that first fish out of the way in the morning. Basically, getting back to my father. He was a farmer. He farmed with his two brothers for 30-some years, 40 years. And uh, that was all handed down through my grandpa, my grandpa and my grandma. Moved here from, my grandma's from Germany and my grandpa was from, uh, right by Poland. And they were big farmers in the area and when they got here, they cleared a lot of the land that we farm now, that my dad farms and I have a boy that's 22, Jeremy. He works a lot with my dad on a farm. And, uh, they were potato farmers back then, and they couldn't make a real decent living farming potatoes. So now he just uh, crops uh, soybeans and corn. 
Jamie Horton still running down near Clark's Marina. That's near the first lock and dam south of Shreveport. And of course, near that lock and dam constructed about 10 years ago, the river really widens. It turns into a big lake. It's taken in a lot of dead timber, a lot of shallow water, and uh, got a little boat wrangling to do to get back into <laughs> yeah, his you, place here. Yeah, you said earlier, in the high water, you didn't have to worry about stumps and all. out on the river, you don't no, have to no, worry. No, no, but Boy, back, in get back in here. here, it's really really pretty treacherous now we're back up to port lake and and of course the the uh chris and ken show begins. yeah they got their camping spots <laughs> same places again throwing uh, brush hogs throwing spinner baits and and brush hogs and other plastics up in them that's probably about three or four feet of water and there's really a nice little groove or a little channel that runs along that bank in that area and Boy, these guys have really worked it over for the first couple of days. Uh -oh. Let Chris deal with that Just one. I want to remind you that this truly is the amateur bass fishing championship of the world. Many countries are represented here. And we want to spend a little time visiting with some of the representatives from foreign countries. We're going to start with Nick Panero of Italy. At home, you're a big soccer player. Yeah, but uh, for me, it's a good experience here. Yeah. And so I am Now, which do you enjoy more, the soccer or the fishing? Um, for all. For all. Also for fishing, uh, but I, I don't catch many fish, but uh, for me it's good work. Were you in a Skeeter or a Triton? Triton. In a Triton. Have you ever driven a Triton bass boat from here to Italy? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's very long time. It may take a little while, you may need some extra fuel, but I challenge you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? The Bass Federation Championship and our top two contenders are fishing yeah. right next yeah, to each is, other in Port Lake on the Red this River. This is what I like. This is what we fish at home a lot, something lo like this. Fishing in this thick cover. But this place turned out to be much better than I thought in practice, you know, but I never settled down and fished it hard because you're looking for some more stuff. This area is the largest area of clear water. I figured uh, I'd come in here in the first day of competition and, uh, you know, figure them out then. Hang on, girl. Hang on, girl. Ken Christ here and Chris Price, both in good position. They get to battle it out to win this tournament, and they're in great position in their respective divisions, too. These guys just need to hang Son on. Just kind of hang in there, yeah. and, and that's what they're doing Don't here. Don't explode. Ken, yeah. Ken has got a problem right here right off the bat in the morning. Boy, he hate the to, to hook a big fish right off the bat and have the possibility of losing him, but... Uh, Boy, the stuff they're fishing in is really tough. But of course, Jerry, any fisherman who starts out flipping and stuff like yeah. this knows it's, it's a crapshoot as to whether you're going to land all your fish, right? I mean, you you factor that in. Absolutely. that That's what it's all about. Those fish live in those places, and they're throwing baits into those spots, so that's got to happen every now and then. And you know what? Something that I'm noticing here, Tommy, not are, only are they fishing close to each other, they have a specific spot they're fishing. And, and you know what? I, I already uh, talked to them before all this happened, and they have a tree where... <laughs> did you see stick? Yeah, yeah, well, boy, he saw it. He, yeah, he, he looks sees everything. <laughs> He's seeing it all. But they got a little boundary marker there, imaginary boundary uh, uh, marker, and neither one of them will cross over that. So I, I think that's great. Ken Chris certainly got an eye full of that good fish <laughs> landed there by Chris Price. This but is good stuff. You know what? If you'll notice, they, they just keep throwing into the same spots in their own little area. So come on, Amy. Come on, girl. This is kind of unusual. Come to the boat. Not as big as that other one, but that's the first fish, and that's a good one. Thank you, Lordy. Looks like they're biting early. Huh? 
It looks like we got an early one this morning. That makes me happy. <laughs> that should have been number two, but I guess. Lucky to have number one. You know, each of these guys have been thinking about this setup all night previously. They knew it was going to turn out like this. And they both claim to keep all the distractions out of their mind, but you know they're going to take notice of what's going on with the other guy. Yeah, you bet. Uh, and you know what? Ken seems to be uh, uh, pitching a brush hog, and that's all. Now, uh, Chris is also pitching some kind of a jig, some kind of plastic, but every now and then he throws a, uh, a spinnerbait in there. Kind of changes things up, but always the same place. He did this to me yesterday, too. Put five quick ones in the boat, made me nervous the rest of the day. I've lost a bunch of fishing here this week. Alabama's Jamie Horton fishing in the Southern Division, trying to become the classic representative from that division, was behind uh, Jesus Villegas after the first day of competition, but had a good second. I know, and he is showing it. us that there are some fish in other places that yeah. Fort Lake is. Yeah, I think yeah. he's down around Clark's Marina, where uh, the majority of the boats are at, because there's a lot of clean water down there. That's two, three more. Let's look at our map of the Red River. Our launch is at Stoner Park here in Shreveport, Louisiana. The majority of our anglers are going down basically to the first lock and dam there in the Clarks Marina area. But our two top contenders in the tournament right now, Price and Chris, have sought out the first cutoff lake there. And that is Port Lake, Tommy. And I'm telling you, these guys have worked hard to find clean water. That is why so many guys went to Port Lake. We can look at Stoner Park right about here. Here's the Red River. Probably a 15-minute run down to the entrance of the lake. And once you get there, you go in around the back side you go around all the timber you it's not easy but you work your way around and our guys come in on the back side right at this angle and boy look at that ditch right there in front of them that is the honey hole and that where ken christ is really working the place over with his brush hog and Chris again. This is like a checkers game. They're getting to watch each other's move and just, you know, what do you Stay do right next? There. And it, you know what? These are, these have to be fish that are moving into Stay these right little there. spots. They're not just living there all the time, but they're around close and they're just moving around. And I, and I have an idea that a lot of that muddy water, both out on the I river and back in the entrance of these oxbows, have got a lot to do with that because these fish are, they're probably searching around for that good water and they they have spawned uh, and so they're they're moving around. Whew, thank you, Lord. There's a good number two. Thank you, Lord. As you might imagine, Japan is represented in this Federation Championship. Over from Japan, here is Masahiro Takatani. Uh, no, no, I, I don't use scent, yes. Why don't you use scent? Uh, it was, uh, uh, sometimes I use scent uh, today, but uh, it's not, not good, yes. I'll give you a little tip. Yes. When you get on the airplane to fly home, <laughs> take your tube of that scent and drop it off in a seat back pocket in first class. Oh, it's okay. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Red River in Shreveport, Louisiana. You are watching the Bass Federation Championships. These are anglers, amateur anglers from all over the world who have been through a difficult series of tournaments and have made it into this elite group who are fishing for really the amateur championship of the world. That should have been number five in the boat. Oh, that's a good one. 
Hang in there, buddy. Good grief, he's got me screwed up good. Come off. Well, Chris Price obviously is going to have to retie there, but he can take some small consolation in the fact that, as of right now at least, he's still the leading candidate from the Eastern Division to go to the Bassmasters Classic. Let's look at the other guys who are trying to get in there. From the north, Hardy Tolgetska came in with 16 pounds today and an 8-pound lead. He's looking good. He's up to 19.8 now. Jamie Horton also looking good. Ken Christ, of course, looking well. Chris Price and Ron Colby also doing pretty good, too. There's a lot on the line. The trip to the Classic is the biggest thing, Jimmy, but it's not the only thing, is it? We know there's a lot at stake, and I love watching anglers fish under pressure and that's what we're seeing right now how about this not only did the divisional winners get a shot at the Bassmasters classic the overall champion of the federation a shot at the great outdoor games gold medal in lake placid later on this summer one of our favorite times oh, yeah. of the year Absolutely. chance to fish with the big dogs up there huh a lot of good yeah. stuff a lot of stuff to look for it make me sweat too there's, there's a, a lot of a lot of stuff i'm thinking about i am just a little bit <laughs> of course we got a good tournament going on as well we've been looking a lot at christ and price but we can't neglect guys like ron colby who are down there uh, near the first lock and dam near clark's marina he had about a four-pound lead going in. I think he's at least holding his own the day. And, uh, Ron, you come from smallmouth bass fishing country. This has got to be a whole new experience for you. No, that's true. That's true. But this this is like being on Mars for me. Uh, you know, I'm used to, like, casting 20, 30 yards down the bank and, and staying a way, long way from these fish. And I can about touch them now with my fishing rod. So uh, it, it's quite the experience, all the trees. Well, Ron, be honest now. You can you can almost touch that Bassmaster Classic feeling. You're just about there. Yeah, it, uh, I'm trying not to keep that on my out of my mind. Uh, I really am. Oh, oh man. Oh, dang it. Did you miss him? I did. Yes, sir. That was a good thump. And they're they're coming pretty slow. It's about an hour hour or so between each bite. Well, Ron, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I almost feel responsible here. We're, we're going to get out of your way. But before we do, I just have to touch on this subject. Tell us a little bit about your almost professional bowling career. Oh, well, I, uh, there for a while, I, I was doing that. And I, um, my daughter, she was only two then. And she liked to come downstairs and sleep on my lap and go to bed. And so I let her do that that night. And uh, kind of, my leg went to sleep. And when I uh, went to stand up to go put her to bed, I, I, I rolled my ankle and I broke it in three spots and, and stuff. So that kind of ruined my career for doing that. But I, I stayed in the business. I ended up uh, buying a, uh, a pro shop in Salt Lake City. And I ran that for 10 years as a part-time thing besides my computer business and stuff. So it got really good. and and. Uh, the center closed, and I just kind of left it alone. And since then, I've about three years ago, four years ago, my fishing has really picked up because I've really focused on that a lot more. Bait everything I weigh, just a bait. All this other stuff down this way usually gets called out by what comes out of that little, that little cut. Chris Price from the Eastern Division. Can you tell he's from Tidewater Country? He's looking really good right now to make it to the Classic. He is definitely in charge in that division. And you know what, uh, Jim Kennedy is in was at least in in second place to start the day and he he's having a good oh, time man, it's just that, uh, chris is thing. wiping them out chris has got that little spinner bait you said he was mixing things up yeah with working that again and that's not too far from a jig really when you think oh about no the, he, the type he, of bait it is right and he's really slow rolling it uh he just uh, uh gives those fish that are in that area are that moving into that area just a little bit different looking so i know we've said this a number of times already but you have to realize that these guys are not uh, uh, fishing for a, a first place. Oh, you know, that that would be it. wonderful, be gravy, but these guys are fishing for the classic. I mean, nothing compared to that one out of his loss. I, he'd eat that. He'd absolutely eat that fish. Well, it doesn't really matter what level you fish on this level, the upper pro levels, down at the club level. The one that got away never gets away from your mind. Another competitor from the continent of Africa is Lionel Botha from Edenvale, South Africa. 
Uh, the techniques that you guys use in South Africa to catch bass, did you try them here this week? I sure did. I, on the first day, I did. Okay, I dropped a couple of fish on the way that I fish back home. Um, like I said to you yesterday, I took a chance yesterday and I went into some di different areas and tried something different. It didn't work out for me. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the Sitco Bassmasters Tour is brought to you by Lowrance, by Motor Guy, and by Spiderwire. Our Bass Federation Championship continues here on the Red River, Shreveport, Louisiana. This is a little cutoff called Port Lake, and this is our leader, Ken Chris, and he continues to put on a show. I don't know, I'll ever see this one. Stay right on there, girly. Come on out and visit me. Yeah, you come on out here. That's better yet. That's even better yet. Get out of that thing. Get out of that thing. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Four. That's a good one. That's a good one. Girl. Well, there's no doubt about it. Chris Price needs a catch-up fish or two or three. But he's just working on the wrong species right here. Big crabber. Oh, this is big broken, man. <laughs> And Jamie Horton is after just the right fish, but he too can't seem to connect. I got the brim. Well, bass is what we need, guys. Let's see if our leader from the West, Ron Colby, can oblige us here. Oh, jeez. I don't want to count my chickens before they're hashed, man, but I say, Birmingham, here I come, baby. Man, there was not even a hit. Just started lifting that up, and I thought I had, uh, I had one of them sticks or something. Maybe I did at first, because <laughs> the bait went right back down on the ground. Oh, baby. That is a pretty fish. Tommy, that man gets excited, doesn't he? he? He's number one. <laughs> he's number one in excitement. Hey, do you know where Jamie Horton is from? Some little town in Alabama. Okay, and what is his home lake? I don't, I don't know that. Lay Lake. Lay Lake, where the Bassmasters Classic is Boy, this year. Boy, wow. he could be a threat, yeah, couldn't he? No kidding. He makes now. it. Wow. Number three. And boy, every one of these fishermen are fishing in the snakiest place. On it. Tommy, have you ever? We've been to a lot of events. Have oh, down here, seen I've seen. I tell you what, one time, right at Clark's Marina, I saw a little snake coiled up on top of a big snake. <laughs> there are two of them stacked too deep. There, that's really something. And I think maybe the high water makes it even worse. And, and oh, yeah. you know what? Most of these are just yeah, harmless. Yeah, just regular brown water little, snakes or right. this snake right here. I don't know what kind he is exactly. He's not the bad kind. No, he's doesn't not the bad kind at all. You don't have to worry about him, although I do worry about him. But, <laughs> but they do have no. the real thing, oh, and right there it is. Right. That, that is a oh cotton mouth. Those are and, aggressive, poisonous snakes, right. and they he, make people he, nervous. Man, they, he'd knock your arm off, wouldn't he? Chris Price, you know, has seen his share of snakes this week, but today he's keeping his focus up pretty good. Fishing with spinning tackle right now. He's yeah. going to kind of finesse a few of them. Same place, he's just trying to give them a, a little bit of a different look, and maybe that's the reason he went to the spinning tackle. 
I mean, these fish are barely picking at it. I almost didn't even set the hook on that fish. Another one of our international competitors has made a long plane ride to the Red River here, all the way from Harare, Zimbabwe, Jerry Houston. <laughs> Tell me about the day on the Red. Well, I got eight bites again today, um, but they were a little bit better quality. Um, kind of the same day as yesterday. I saved uh, one of my best areas for today, and maybe that's uh, an error I made. First thing you said was too little too late, but there's one more day and anything can happen. Yeah, but I think I'm going to need a big sack. Have you talked to the gentleman that's leading your division so far today? No, sir, but I believe he's got a big sack. <laughs> This week on the Sitgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail, it is the Federation Championship. This is third place, Jamie Horton from the state of Alabama right now. He's a long ways back in third place in the overall tournament here, but he is looking good to be the Bassmasters Classic Qualifier from the Southern Region. Jamie's gonna have to measure that one. While he does that, let's kick it over to Jimmy Dykes in today's Bass Time. Normally when it comes to sibling rivalry, it centers around who gets to sit in the front seat of the car. But for a brother and sister combo from New Hampshire, this rivalry comes down to fishing. Both Rex and Vanessa Rodonis are among 10 youths between the ages of 7 and 14 who have qualified for the Bassmasters Casting Kids National Championship. 10 finalists will compete for $20,000 in college scholarships at this year's Bassmasters Classic. This year's Federation Championship marks the first time that the champion from the paralyzed Veterans of America Bass Trail secured a berth in the tournament. The PVA Bass Trail is a BASS sanctioned event, and from now on, the champion of that series will receive an automatic invitation to the Federation Championship and compete for a slot in the Bassmasters Classic. Richard Warwick from Newark, Delaware, is representing the PVA in this year's event. Well, I have to sit in my chair all day. I, I, uh, I fish from the front pedestal seat, and I'm not allowed, to, you know, I'm not allowed it to walk, you know. I'm un unable to walk, and uh, I just sit in the uh, front pedestal seat all day and uh, catch my fish. You know what you need for the lead in the division? A whole lot. Yes, you do. About 200 pounds. Watch the scales. Going up at 2 pounds and 13 ounces is the weight. Yes, it was very exciting to, uh, to be invited to fish the uh, Federation Championships. I had no idea when I was fishing the PBA Grand National Championships that I was going to be invited to fish this tournament. And it was, it was a very big surprise, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm glad that the PBA allowed me to come. It was tough. I'm, I'm getting that. We've already had one guy come across and say, it. will it change tomorrow? I hope it'll change. I hope the cold, uh, they're saying a cold front's going to come through, so I hope the cold front doesn't uh, turn the fish off. Well, staying with Federation news, there was big news for Susan Langley when Al Smith and Fish Fishburn invited her to come up and watch her boyfriend, David Swain, the North Carolina State Champion, weigh in during the second day. Oh, he, he's been ignoring you all week, and we want to apologize for that. We didn't mean to do that. What are you going to say for yourself? I ain't got much to say. What, the only thing I can say is, Susan, he married me. has been brought to you by Sitco. Well, it would take a miracle for anybody to catch our leader, so uh, I guess we better visit with him a little bit. Ken, Chris, what in the world are you doing different than everybody else? You're, you're kind of making this a, a, a no contest. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I'm doing anything different than most people. Um, I just happened to find a good spot here that, that's got a little bent, a ditch with a little bend in it up against some flooded timber. It, uh, it seems to be holding some fish. It's about two, uh, two to four foot of water is what I'm fishing. And let's talk a little bit about the classic now, because I, I just know you're going to be there. 
Well, uh, if I should be fortunate enough to get there, it's going to be, be awful exciting for me. Uh, of course, something you, you fish for. I've been fishing for uh, since about 1988. You know, it's always one of the dreams of an amateur angler to be able to make it in there. Oh, come on, darling. Don't do this to me. He got me under that fence. I hope it ain't a grinnel. Just might do it for me. How about that, huh? Well, Sticking his hand in there. And I know you'd do that, Jerry. Oh, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Were you thinking about them snakes we saw a minute ago? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, he said that might do it for me. I don't think he's talking about the tournament here, is he? He's no, he's about... his division. Uh, that will. In other words, that will get me in the classic. That was exactly what he was saying there, and that is what uh, uh, Ken is trying to do as well. Both both these guys are in it, man. They, no way are they going to get knocked out. There's your good one. There's your good one. Stay hooked, baby. Stay hooked, baby. Stay hooked. Stay hooked. Let's go for a boat ride. Huh? Let's go for a boat ride. Come here, darling. That one will do it. That one will do it. There's the insurance policy. There's the insurance policy. Yes. <laughs> that one will do it. That one will do it. Ken Chris looking yeah, mighty happy, and he has a lot of reasons to be happy here. He has proven his skills. He has proven that he has been the man for the moment here at the Federation Championships, the huge lead in the overall tournament. He's also a lock for the Bassmasters Classic. He's looking forward to the weigh-in, and so are we, and we will have that for you just moments away. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco and in part by Long John Silvers, by Flowmaster, and by Yamaha. We are just moments away from our weigh-in and the crowning of the championship of the Bass Federation for 2002. We will also send five Federation anglers to the Bassmasters Classic. That's awfully exciting. As for the rest of that field, Jimmy Dykes, especially the ones from the Bassmaster Tour, that hasn't been decided yet, pending our last regular season event down on Lake Eufaula, and everyone's watching the Angler of the Year race. It's a horse race. It down is. Down the stretch they come right now, and Davey Height has just a narrow five-point lead over Larry Nixon. This is a guy, Height, that got off to a quick start with back-to-back -back wins. He's trying to hold on and finish this thing off. Mark Davis is in third, Kevin Van Dam in fourth, Timmy Horton in fifth. All five anglers in the top five right now are former anglers of the year. What a race, huh? Oh, what a race. And a lot of people are looking at the middle of the pack in that race as well because the cutoff for the Classic from the Bassmaster Tour is pretty important. They're taking 32 guys. Let's take a look at the guys on the bubble. They include Peter Silveros, Peter T, Alton Jones, Steve Daniel, Kelly Jordan waiting to see if he's going to get in, as is Mike Worm. An interesting group of guys to watch there, Jerry. I know you got a, a flashback for us from this tournament, though. From this tournament. Yeah. We got to get back to this right. <laughs> hey, Ron Colby caught a, about a three pounder. He caught it back in the brush, the nest. Well, let's just have Ron tell us about that. So I flipped it up into this moss and uh, just kind of worked it over until it fell right straight through, just shaking it hard enough. Dropped it right down, didn't even just felt it hit the bottom, picking it up. And that didn't do nothing. I picked it up and went to pick it up again, and it was like I was hung on one of them little sticks. There's just a whole bunch of these little six, eight, ten inch little logs right in here, cluttering this place up. I thought I had the sinker hung up on it. I just kind of started to lift up, and it just went right back down to the ground. I don't know if she had it right then, and that was what was keeping her from coming up, or I don't care. She's in the boat. <laughs> Today's flashback has been brought to you by Long John Silvers. 
Well, it is way in time, and the crowd here in Shreveport getting the first look at the five anglers from the Bass Federation who will be going to this year's Bassmasters hey, Classic. You don't even have to weigh in. You're going to the Bassmasters Classic. All right. Yeah. Woo. He made it. There's nobody left in his division. He's going back. He is going to be back to back to back limits in our event. We have not seen much of that this week. There you go. He's going to the classic. Seven pounds and six ounces. Seven sticks. Show me a couple of them. If you bring me one fish, you're going to Birmingham, Alabama. Ron Colby. I'm excited. So I told you you needed four, and I paused, and you were thinking pounds. Oh, yeah. It was a little scary, but let's see what would have happened. Didn't matter. Eight pounds, four ounces, eight, four. Thanks, Al. Man, I am proud of you. Hold up a couple right here in front for Charles Back and Gerald Crawford, shooting for the Bassmasters this week. Eastern Division, Churchill, Maryland, Chris Price, right here in front. Ken Crest right here. Seventeen pounds and fifteen ounces was day one. Yesterday he blows that out of the water with eighteen pounds and four ounces. There's your champion. Our Sitco Bass Federation champion, Ken Crest, with an overall catch on the Red River. 53 pounds, 13 ounces. Congratulations. Ken Crist, classic bound and certainly proving himself to be the class of the field here on the Red River, winning the Federation Championship with a total of 53 pounds, 13 ounces, about 11 pounds ahead of the rest of the field. Congratulations, Ken, and our other Federation anglers will be competing in the classic. Next time we see you, we'll complete our classic field at the final tour event of the year on Lake Eufaula. We'll see you then. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPNOutdoors.com.